Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. Welcome to the Black Irish Podcast. Welcome to an all new episode of Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brendan McCorkle. Mike could not be with us this week. He just found out that there's a dinosaur fetus in an egg somewhere that's millions of years old, so he has to reevaluate his entire life. So, that being said, I've got some stuff to get off my chest anyway. So, now that I don't have a mic buffer to shut me down, here goes, people, strap in. I need to talk about my passive aggressive three year old. I think he's the most passive aggressive three year old that walks the earth. And let me tell you why. Look, Yesterday, we had come back from a long, fun week, long weekend, and as we're about to get in the bath, I notice his nails are a little long, so I'm like, dude, okay, we need to clip your nails before we get in the bath. Now, I had asked him if he had to go to the bathroom before we get in the bath. We always do that. So I start clipping his nails. He's had a tough day at school, and he just starts pissing on me, like peeing on my leg, looks up, looks at me in the face, and I go, hey! Then he stops and doesn't say a word, just like, "Mm, that just happened, Dad. I'm like, okay, kid, I just asked you if you had to go to the bathroom. You said no. Now you're coming at me. You don't mind me clipping your nails, even though you don't like it. What's with the piss, kid? I don't know. You tell me if I deserve it. How about this? I will walk you through from last week's episode, the next day, the Thursday it came out, up until yesterday when he peed on me. You tell me if I deserve it or not, okay? So it started on Thursday evening. We were fortunate enough to go to Disney on Ice with some friends. And, you know, that's a fun time for everybody. I will say, right off the bat, though, the uh, the first, very first section of people they bring out is usually a nostalgia group, because we've been to Disney on Ice a few times now. And it's Aladdin. Fantastic. Everybody loves Aladdin. So, the genie comes out to do a double Lutzy flip and eats it right on the ice. One of my favorite things in a Disney show is when people eat it and then they have to try and figure it out and get right back in the rhythm of the music. It's fantastic. It's like a horse pooping in a parade, like the very first front line. If all those horses poop, everybody tracks through that shit. So, you want those initial horses, the front line, the army of the parade to just start pooping everywhere. It makes so much fun for everybody. Anyway, moving on from there. I I love seeing that kind of stuff. I love seeing that kind of stuff, the slip-ups. The genie was the only slip-up though, which I will say made for me to be happy in the initial and then everything else was a fantastic show. But I don't know, that, uh, that kind of stuff, I don't know how you recover from that instantly if you have to get right back into a program. Because it's not just like you're going, you're not being judged. Except for maybe by like 10,000 children. But, you know, it's it's not like, oh, I can kind of skip these other couple parts of my routine. Because after he fell on that one, he had like an even harder thing to do after that. So he's got to mentally get back into gear. Or she, whoever was in the genie. But, dude, I don't know about that recovery time. Didn't do very well. Just kind of skated and bounced to the music and skated off. I don't know. But... I do. It did remind me of the horses pooping thing, and I love horses pooping in a parade. So anyway, we go to Disney on Ice. That was Thursday. That was great. Friday, we are going on a family trip. We're going to a cabin in the woods. Um, so let me set this up for you. So my family every has been a Christmas Eve tradition for years and years and years. It used to be my grandfather and grandmother's tradition. We'd all go out to my dad's side of the family. Would all gather at their house including his older brother, who's no longer with us, which, by the way, they had, like, a giant gap in years. Like, he was a toddler when his older brother was in high school. It's got to be so weird. But anyway, um, so that was their tradition. Like, we always met with my dad's side of the family at my grandparents' house, and we would always go to a restaurant called Steer and Stein, and that's basically what it was. You ate, steer, and drank beer out of Steins. It was perfect for us. Uh, 
Then we would drive around after dinner, look at Christmas lights with all everybody packed in the cars, go back and do our presents. So in the spirit of everybody except for my dad being gone, uh, we just do it within our family. I have three sisters. I have two brothers. Um, I'm the oldest boy, but I have two older sisters. And so now it's just that collective. Our collective does Christmas Eve, which is great because then that means significant others, you know, now that all, all of uh, their kids are older, meaning my parents, we could do Christmas Day at our own houses, everything. It's not a big deal. So that's fantastic in that regard. So that being said, uh, my sister got, you know, did a wonderful thing, got us all set up with a cabin in Lake Arrowhead that would accommodate all of these people, all of these people. So there were... Uh, 13 adults and eight kids on this trip and the kids range from three to 12. So there, you know, there's a lot of people on this trip. Um, and we went up to Lake Arrowhead. It snowed on Tuesday. So we got there Friday, you know, great, great, great stuff. And before we got there, obviously we had to pack the car. So, uh, we got our brand new pilot. Thank you very much, Honda, the helpful Honda people. Um, uh, and then, so we got this new car, we got two kids, we've got Christmas presents to bring, which nobody fucking brings up, that takes extra space, and all the snow gear, which is on top of all of our regular stuff, so there's a lot to go in this car. So, I mean, I was already pretty good at packing cars, but when you are become a parent, you have to be like a Tetris master. So... Basically, when you're departing to go on your trip, you're a Tetris master. And then when you're departing to come home, your return trip, you're just trying to shove 10 pounds of shit into a 5-pound bag and see what happens. You know what I mean? But considering this is Christmas, also on the return trip, you really, really, really get a good sense of how you feel about your gifts. <laughs> you either protect them and you're like, oh, this one's got to be safe or whatever. You're like, eh, I don't care. I'm going to throw this away when I get home anyway. Just shove it in the back. Nobody cares. <laughs> uh, but so we get on this road trip after we have a perfectly packed car. And uh, we start going up. And traveling with kids is just, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know they're doing their best. But when they... When they can verbalize what they need, it's really frustrating. When you're like, hey guys, anybody need to go to the bathroom? Hey guys, anybody hungry? No. They like they don't understand that you mean, will you be or do you need to in the next foreseeable future? They just go, right this second? No, 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 I'm good. All right, you ding-dongs. So we're going from the valley to the mountains, and we're going on a Friday afternoon. The week before Christmas. Everybody's traveling anyway. So the freeways were pretty backed up. So we decided to go the back way, the highway. So that being said, there's not a whole lot of stops in between. When you're driving through the mountains and stuff, it's like every 30, 35 minutes or so, if you're lucky, you get a gas station and a fast food joint or something like that. So needless to say, we ended up trying to piss on the side of the road with a three-year-old who you know, leans up against the toilet with one hand when he goes pee. So I just had to hold him. I basically picked him up by the uh, the hips and rotated him forward slightly so that he was about 22 and a half degree angle from the earth. And just, I didn't want him to pee on me, so I told him to pick a rock to piss on. Now, once he was done, he found that to be quite entertaining. So he was telling me, he was pointing out the rock that he wanted to pee on next. And I was like, okay, buddy, first of all, we're not taking that rock with us in the car just so you can piss on it. Second of all, we aren't coming back this way to piss on this rock. So you can just let that one go, partner, okay? We don't need any pee rocks in our car. So anyway, we finally get up there. It's beautiful. So the roads were clear because it snowed three days before. So that means they took care of the roads the next day. They salted, scraped, did all their shit. So it was perfectly fine. Didn't need chains or anything like that. Get up to this beautiful cabin. They had We had a uh, like a guest house where the grandparents stayed with the kids. Um, it was a two-bedroom, you know, like six bunk beds in one room or whatever. So all the, oh my God, the funk that was in that room from four boys and one girl. That poor girl, my niece. Oh my gosh. I don't know how she got through it, but bless her. Um, 
So they had the front little small cabining house. And then they're up the driveway, you know, 40, 50 feet or something like that was the main house. So you walk in, there's an upstairs full on master bedroom, which we were fortunate enough to have. So we had the master bedroom with a bathroom, you know, everybody's sharing space and whatever, but we just happened to get, you know, a cool bed or whatever. So we had that, you walk in, there's nice living space, uh, island countertop for a nice open kitchen so you can walk around the whole area so there and it was all connected it was all open connected kitchen dining living area so that was nice because we had obviously a ton of people there so the more space where we could all still be together without being in each other's space that was key um so that i mean just for that alone uh kudos to my sister for picking this joint then we go to the fun part then we go downstairs to the den and in this den, it's like just trick city, okay? Like some somebody put in a lot of thought into what they've always wanted and built their den. So it was wonderful for us. Walk down the stairs. There's a fireplace right off to the left-hand side. You walk in. Everything's wood for the most part, uh, but there's like exposed copper piping, there's levers and stuff instead of switches. So it's really cool. We walk in, fireplace is normal. They didn't do any trickery on the fireplace so you wouldn't blow the house up. Kudos to them. Uh, right next to that was like an all-in-one Pac-Man Galaga machine. My family in particular has been raised on Galaga. Most people played Super Mario or Pac-Man. We played Galaga in, in my house. So that was a big like, oh, hell yeah. We're going to, let's see who gets the high score. That's for sure. So, that being said, before I move on to this wonderful room, in the process of playing Galaga, we the high score was 110,000 and change. So, that means you got to get up to like level 14-ish, maybe 15, depending on your bonuses and challenging stages and whatnot. Um, so, that never got eclipsed. However, in the process of playing this game, my brother, uh, my youngest brother was the one who was really locked into it. He was the one that was most trying to beat the high score. Um, and he ended up getting like three of the top five. He got the, the highest registered score out of all of us. Now, that being said, which was about 100 grand, he also had like a 99 and then like a 89 or something like that. I had like a 96 like a 94, and I did have 100,000 at one point. I was on level 13, and I had just lost like two guys in a row, like bam, bam, back to back, super pissed. I had the double airplanes on the bottom, the double rocket ships, whatever they are. I had one got lost, whoosh, crapped up, and then I was still battling through the level. I had one, anybody that knows the game, the blue and yellow bee that makes the circle. I had cleared the rest of the level. I had one extra person and I have my one rocket ship. I'm trying to get this last bee. I forgot in the chaos of my frustration, I forgot that the bee does a loop and comes back around. So it got my guy. It was one on one, the easiest thing to do. And I lost an extra guy for no reason on stage 13. I was pissed. So I pop, pop the machine with an extra man and a hundred grand. And it unplugs. <laughs> Fucking high score gone, man. And I was on an absolute roll. And I'm pretty sure stage 14 is a challenging stage. So I would have had a free, like just free points in that stage. So who knows if I would have beat that high score. But... Anyway, that was my, that's just kind of how I operate. And you'll, you'll absolutely understand more when I get in further. So that was awesome. So then they had a foosball table, which was great. We didn't play, the kids played mostly on that. Um, just because they were being so fucking aggressive with spinning the, the handles. That it was just kind of like, you know what? If nobody's using foosball, nobody wants to hear foosball. Because you guys have ruined it. Much as kids do. But anyway, we uh, so we did have a good time. Playing with the kids was great because then, you know, you don't care if, how you play. So I was just practicing, passing, and doing silly, silly stuff like that. 
Um, next, uh, you know, and then in the main area, they had like four individual leather type chairs, a leather type love seat. And in the middle of the room, there's a like a bear insignia on the floor, but it's metal. So we were like, that's pretty rad. I would say it's about an 18 inch circle. And we're like, that's cool. So then we go, you walk over to a bar area. They have a nice wood bar, three bar stools. It's about a 12 foot bar. And then you can walk behind the bar and it's a full bar area. Not stocked with booze, but full bar area. Sink, uh, the little uh, wet tray where you stick all of the booze bottles. Uh, had everything. Beautiful, beautiful space. So then we're like, where are the light switches around this joint? We have no idea where anything is. So then we just start pulling and tugging shit. So we realize that there's a lever, turns on the lights. Cool. All right. Then we're like, okay, that was the lights. What does all this other stuff do? So then we figure out that you walk over to the bar, you hit... uh, Air compressor switch, like it, it almost looks like you're going to fry a tart in Texas. You're like, Bleh! and it just, Bleh! this teleport table comes out of the floor and it's perfect. It's right in the middle of the four chairs and the love seat, right in the middle of the room. So it just pops up out of nowhere. We ended up putting that thing up and down like kids are downstairs having a dance party. Boom, teleport table down. If like, hey, we had a, you know. People are eating. We're hanging out down here. Somebody needs to put their drinks. Teleport table up. It was awesome. Then you go into this bathroom, which was super weird. It was awesome. It had, like, everything was exposed. The copper piping, all that kind of stuff. Really well done. Uh, And then it was, like, the light switch was on, like, a chain. The the flushing valve was actually um, an on-off ball valve for, like, a three-quarter inch pipe. Uh, It was, it was pretty slick. Well done. Uh, They had their own little wine cellar that was locked up. Good. They had a humidor with, you know, bitchin' humidor cigars that was all locked up. It was really nice. And then, so we're like, damn, this is cool. We're like, oh shit, balcony, hot tub. Like, that's kind of cool. The juxtaposition, the hot and the cold, the snow and being in a hot tub. Awesome. So then there's a bookshelf. Right by where the humidor is, we're going to put a small Christmas tree downstairs, special ornaments and stuff. Obviously, everybody's touching everything. Pull the second book. Secret passageway, my friends. I kid you not, there was a passageway, secret passageway, from the downstairs den in the main house out to the guest house. So that's how the kids just went back and forth for the most part, was using this secret tunnel. It was really, really rad joint. It was just... I mean, it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, The things that I didn't like about this house, I will tell you, the thumb turn locks on all the handles, they didn't all go the same direction. That's a pet peeve of mine. It just, like they should all turn the same way. Lock is left, unlock is right, or vice versa. I don't care. Pick a side and go with it. You know what I mean? Anyway, I also don't like it when the toilet paper's upside down. Like, I'll fix it. Because that's what it is. It's wrong, so I'll fix it. Because if it's upside down, when you pull from the back, it's just going to keep rolling out. That's not how it's meant to be. I get some people like it because it comes towards you like a little ATM machine, toilet paper ATM machine. But anyway, I digress. I also like, I don't know, I need toggle switches in my house too for the lights. Because I like to turn off my lights with karate hand chops, like pew, pew, pew. When I'm going in and out of a room. Uh, That's also what I say when I come. Karate! 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 Not that you need to know that. But, anyway. So, then we we get there. Everybody's there. Ha ha ha! This is a great time. Everybody's hugging, laughing. Whatever they're doing. Tickling. I don't know. So, we all get there and we're all just trying to get established. And then we're like, oh, shit. Uh, We gotta feed everybody. And it's like 6 o'clock. Luckily, I was anticipating this, so I had brought up a couple of marinated tri-tips just to throw on the grill, like, hey, just in case we don't have food, here's food. So, luckily, that worked out. And I'll even give you my tri-tip marinade. It's for free. Nobody cares. Um, Light soy sauce. 
like, mm, let's go with ratios. I've been teaching my eight-year-old about ratios and average lately. So we'll say uh, two to one soy sauce to Dijon mustard, uh, maybe two and a half to one. Uh, you also put in fresh smashed cloves of garlic, however much you like. I usually put a little bit of horseradish in there. And then whatever your kind of uh, seasoning that you like to use, put that in there. I like to make my own dry rubs and stuff, so I, you know, I just season it as, as I like. If I'm on a, you know, going for a cheap, quick date, um, I'll use Monterey steak seasoning or Montreal, whatever the fuck it is. Um, that's just a cheat code. So mix that all up, marinate it for anywhere from two hours to overnight. It's going to be bomb. Just don't fuck it up while you're cooking it. Like I did. I overcooked it. Um, but it was kind of rad because we just ran to the store and it's a local joint in Lake Arrowhead at eight, you know, seven o'clock, something like they're not open. Like, they're barely open. The deli's closed. Everything's closed. So, it's like, whatever you can find on the shelves. And, by the way, they're pretty bare. It's like, you know, you can start at one end of the aisle and be in the pasta section. And, by the end, you're in the cereal aisle. You know, it just, it forms like that because they just have limited stuff. Because there's not a lot of people coming in now. So, we ended up just getting, like, a ton of pasta. And, you know, just some salad stuff. Whatever we could string together and have a nice big family meal. It was pretty cool. Um, but, I also... Like, so I like doing that. I cooked all the, the stuff on Friday just because that's me. I like hosting. Like, that, I don't know. My mom thinks I should be a game show host, by the way. She thinks I, I'm i like Nick Cannon. I don't know. I don't see it. I don't think I'd look good in a turban, even though I really want to for the face covering bandana situation. But, I don't know. I think, I, I don't think I would be a good game show host, though, because there isn't any game show that I would want to host. I don't know. Let's see here. Mm, I couldn't do Wheel of Fortune because I'd be like, you guys are idiots. I couldn't do Jeopardy because I'm not that smart or don't know all those details. Hmm. I think maybe like Survivor. Survivor where I go out, see all these people struggle, but I'm still on a beautiful island. And I go back to my resort like two hours after being in the sun. I'm a Survivor guy. I'll do that. Oh, man. But then, so anyway, yeah. So then, basically from there, it was like everybody settled in. We're just hanging out. So there's a, you know, Friday night games ensued after dinner. So we started in with the Galaga. Um, and turns out what <laughs> what kind of was awesome was uh, my little brother brought a chess set. And I don't think he knew if anybody knew how to play chess. So, randomly, it was just set up downstairs. I think maybe he liked the idea of being in a cabin, you know, Christmas time. Like, all it just seems right. It fits. There should be a chess board on the table. I also happened to bring a chess checkers board, but had no idea if anybody was going to utilize it. So, it's out there. And then, uh, my little brother challenges my other brother to a game. It just kind of like, hey, you know. Do you know how to play chess? you want to play chess? And then sure. And then so come to find out, my brother-in-law and both my brothers and myself are fairly decent at chess. It's either we're all pretty good or we're all really bad so we think we're good because we're all on kind of the same level. So it ended up being that we were having these chess games that were going, you know, we're playing, my family's aggressive. We do everything aggressively pretty quick. We're very impatient. So we're, I mean, I would say that our moves, in between moves, were usually 15 to 20 seconds. Um, the longest it would ever take is maybe a minute, two at the most, but that only happened a couple of times. And our games were going for 40, 45 minutes. And it wasn't just like, move here, move back and forth. Like, we were maneuvering around the board and utilizing all the, everything. It was a lot of fun. Um, and so... Again, back to a Galaga reference of unplugging the machine. Here's the typical way that I asterisk games. Playing chess with my brother. He's whooping my ass. He's whooped my ass three times. I haven't played chess since I played with one of my best friends, Josh, in like high school, who's a really good chess player. 
And uh, I think I beat him maybe once. And that's probably something I'd tell myself so I don't feel bad. I don't know that that's true. But I used to play with somebody who was very good. Like uh, an elite amateur chess player. And so I was pretty confident about my skills, but I hadn't played in so long. And my brother, who I guess plays fairly regularly online, you know, he's he was, he was the cream of the crop. He was the guy to beat. Uh, he had beat me three times in a row. Uh, all competitive games. All more competitive as they went along. And then the fourth game that we played, which ended up being our last game, but which we didn't know at the time, but I'm like... Pfft. I can't let this cocksucker walk out of here with a victory over me, with all victories over me. I can't get skunked. So we sit down to play another game. And I made a move that I shouldn't have made. It was a stupid move. Um, I, I don't usually do take backs. Like I had made dumb moves that was like obvious. Like, why would you do that? And, you know, him being courteous, he's like, dude, you want to take that back? I'm like, nope, I made the move. Let's play it out. I have all these other pieces. I don't need that one. You know, like, it was my mistake. We'll keep playing. That's how it goes. So this time it was something where the game would have ended. I moved my queen into a certain space where if he kills the queen, it puts me in checkmate. It was just like, I forgot to make, I was so excited about the move I was making with the queen that I didn't make the move I was supposed to make before it. Moving the bishop out of the way to clear the space. So anyway, so he goes, listen, you got to take that back. Otherwise the game's over. And we were having probably the most competitive game that we had had lots of ups and downs back and forth and it's about halfway through so technically he wins I take it back and then I end up beating him so that's kind of how my my way of winning tends to shake out it's like well technically you are the better man but the stats don't lie and I'm totally cool with that because usually when I'm going into something I just want to do it for me I want to have the most fun. I want to challenge myself to see how good I am. So the wins and losses at the end of the day, I know if I won. I know if I lost. And I lost four games. We called it three and a half. So we called it a half victory. We're splitting that one. But that was a ton of fun, you know. And we're sitting there and we're just trying to think up games or whatever. One game that I would say you should never play with your family is spin the bottle. That is like the Russian roulette of family gatherings, people. Stay away. Actually, I'll tell you what. The only way I'd be okay with spin the bottle in a family gathering is if it was for open hand slaps. I'm all about that game. Let's play that game tomorrow. Get to everybody in the house and it's like, listen, if it's your family, it's the same thing as actual spin the bottle. If you think about it, open hand slaps, okay? So, listen, you don't know what you're going to get. Is it going to be like a quick little, oh, that wasn't too bad? Or is it going to be like somebody's coming in for it? Because, listen, if it's open hand slaps against your family members, if you got no beef with a family member, you never wanted to hit them, you just give them a little, cheat, a little tappy, and they know how much you love them. But if it's somebody that you've had issues with and you love them, but sometimes when you hug them, you want to squeeze them. You give them the open palm that you've been waiting for. The ones where they have those slap contests and they like hold on to a bar like they're about to arm wrestle, but that's just to stabilize so they can really throw out their shoulder while they're trying to slap the taste out of somebody's mouth. You could do that too. Or even better, if it lands on one of their significant others, you get to choose as the spinner if you want to kiss them or if you want to hit them. Because you're not related, hopefully. I like that idea, too. May need to implement that one. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But, it, you know, it's fun to see all these kooks together. Uh, my sister and her family couldn't make it from Arizona. or I think they're in Arizona. I don't remember anymore. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of fun to, to see everybody. And, you know, I will say this about my family. We, uh, we're fucked up, but we were never dysfunctional. We always functioned as a fucked up family because as individuals, we all have our own shit, but collectively we always brought it together. So, you know, I don't know. I, I take everything that I have 
and everybody that's been a part of my life. And I really, really do enjoy all the weird shit, man. I really do. And I'm not afraid to celebrate it. Now, there's a lot of people that don't like the way I celebrate it. That's fine. Don't listen. There's a lot of people that think it's wild the way I celebrate. Fucking tune in, man. We're right here. I'm not going anywhere. But anyway, moving back on. I will say, oh, I'll say this. I had, so we had eaten the tri-tip and everything. I had a nice little piece of tri-tip in my tooth while we were trying to figure out, you know, a game to play or something like that. And I just reached in with my finger and I picked it out on the very first try. That That's like, that never, ever happens. That's, it's kind of like winning on a scratcher. It's like, yeah, it wasn't the best decision to start with, whatever, how this got to be. But I ended up with a victory, so I'm totally fine. Like, I probably shouldn't have ate that extra tri-tip. I probably shouldn't have bought this stupid scratcher. But hey, it worked out this time. I don't know. I will say, going on a trip in the woods, even if you have a cabin, my hygiene definitely <laughs> took a back seat this weekend. I don't think I was the worst by any means, but definitely it took a back seat. Like, there's, there's a upstairs shower uh, in our room that, you know... I went outside to go burn down some trees and then came inside and the knob for the temperature was broken. So there is a, like, the contraptions in this house. So it had, it was awesome, but it was also kind of oldie stuff, you know, so it was like it had a rain shower function, kind of worked. It had like the six jet shooter things that were all soap scummed over, so like three random water (laughs) <laughs> things would hit you with not enough pressure to get any soap off you. And then they had like a hand, you know, wand that had no pressure at all. So the problem is this place was awesome because it had an Instahot. Uh, for those of you that don't know what an Instahot is, it means it takes regular water, regular temperature water, instantly heats it up. Uh, it's electronic. You have to do this whole thing. So it's not as easy as it sounds, but cabin in the woods very very convenient problem is the temperature gauge was stuck on like 187,000 degrees so dude I got half my eyes open I'm trying to do this thing while I had already put on hand soap because we forgot to get fucking soap at the store so somebody was running out but I'm already getting in the shower so I get this hand pump soap from oh the sink I'm doing my pits I'm like what is necessary here Couldn't get it, so I'm like, screw this. Get a towel, go downstairs. It's all family for the most part. I'm like, hey, getting in the shower. Sorry, guys. Getting that shower, totally fine. So I was like, all right. If that was my first shower situation, like, let's just see how many showers we need to have. You know what I'm saying? But there's also, like, you know, we didn't have our standard stuff. We didn't have a ton of tissues lying around, even though I bought a box of 12 and didn't bring them. Just forgot. But it's like, you know, kids walking around, boogers, I don't care. If I don't have a tissue, that booger is going directly on your clothing. You're the most filthy animal here anyway. So, yeah, you're fine. I'm going to wash it anyway. I actually wiped my nose on the inside of my sweatshirt too. I didn't think I was ever going to do that again in my life. But I was outside on the balcony smoking. And I was like, oh, we got a drippy. What do I do here? Like, well, I ain't going back inside just for a paper towel. Screw it. Flip the inside. Here we go. Sorry for the nip slip. And then you move on. But here's the thing. You can't do that with a regular shirt. It'll show through. You're disgusting. You're a disgusting human. Everybody knows what that little streak is. You didn't spill anything. That's snot. You're gross. And you can't do it with like a coat, like sleeves, because then you wipe it across and then you're that kid that has snot connected from his nose to his ear Like an Indian jewelry chain or some stupid shit. I don't know. By the way, how long do you think it was until that kid felt a boob? Or a nutsack. I don't know. Depending on the person. I don't know. Which, by the way, can we get into this whole pronouns thing a little bit? Let me just, let me give you my personal little soliloquy on these pronouns here. I'm all about using correct pronouns. All about it. Some people say we have too many already. I think we don't have enough. 
I think that there should be like a tournament style bracket. Maybe like CBS Sports can do it since they already have all the bracketology. And we do it for every letter of the alphabet. Okay. That way there's nobody left out. And believe it or not, we'll probably get used to it sooner than later, even though it's going to be annoying. It's like, it's like when your email format updates and you're like, oh, I'm never going to learn this. And then like a week later, you're like, wait, how, what did we used to do? You don't remember anymore. But a full bracket, I mean a full bracket, everybody gets their fair shake. You know, there'll be a few upsets, which will be fun. Uh, like what do we got now? I don't know. Is there anything for like F we could do? Like what if furries, what if people want to be identified as furries and they win out in the F bracket? There's a lot of other Fs that could be defeated. But if you identify as a furry, come on. And, and like the government, like society deems that this process is fair and whatever the results are, that's what it is. You go and vote on it at a poll like you would for the president. We do a weekly bracket. That'd be awesome, man. Get everybody involved together again. That'd be fun. But that, <laughs> could you imagine, though, if furries was like a real thing and we had to like, okay, I have to identify. You identify as a furry. I have to respect that. And then fucking Carl shows up to work dressed as a zebra on Tuesday. And you're like, come on, Carl. You can't wear that to the office. And by the way, when I said Carl, I meant Reggie Val Johnson, you racist fucks. Don't you ever forget about that wonderful man. I don't know, but if we used every letter in the alphabet, that would be like, you know, that's like uh, picking a, your cereal. Okay? If you're picking your cereal, there's so many to choose from. So many. That you have, you, you don't have to, but you probably will fall in a category of, I like this cereal. Good enough for me. Which, by the way, I think the cereal industry is the only industry to finish their job. They, they got all the cereals out there. We don't need any more. Well done. Well done, cereal. Very proud of you. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. We're at the cabin. So, Saturday... Um, the, uh, a lot of the adults wanted to go out. Uh, my sister who hosted the event had a very particular place that she wanted to go have a glass of wine, look out on the lake. It's kind of her spot. Um, so, you know, everybody's like, yeah, we'll do all this, but nobody wants to bring eight kids to wine bar. So I volunteered to hang back with the kids because, I, you know, I get along with anybody that's younger than me because I'm the most immature person in the room. So... If you're younger than me, we could totally hang. I've been there. I, I probably know what you like. And I'm an adult. I can get it for you. We can do it together. So I was all about that. So um, the my folks stayed back with us, with the kids. So we all just kind of, you know, tag teamed it up. But it was a lot of fun. The olders kind of just did their thing. They had some outdoor frozen cornhole they were playing with, you know, playing inside. We had a, like, three three-year-old. So that was a lot of fun just being silly with those guys. Um, and then Saturday night we did Secret Santa, which in a, in a party bigger than, like if your family gathering for Christmas is more than, I don't know, seven, eight people, Secret Santa, bro, come on. Nobody wants your shitty gift. And we don't want to throw it away because we love you. We just hate this piece of plastic you gave us. Or this book we'll never read. And, by the way, if you give a shitty gift at Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever you celebrate, you're an asshole. You want to know why? Because we want to re-gift it and we don't remember who gave it to us. So if you get a re-gift back, it's your own fault. If you get a re-gift back and you bought it in the first place, you should say, you know what, I'm sorry for doing this in the first place. Now I know not to do it again. I accept this present. That's your role in that situation. But I don't know. And the white elephant thing, again, if you don't have a high limit on it at like at least 50 bucks, if you have a $20 white elephant gift, everybody gets $20 gift cards. That's all it is. It's a stupid game because nobody 
wants anything that's worth $20 that's an adult. $20 is two combo meals at your favorite fast food joint. Nobody wants that. Raise the limit or get rid of it. It's just not, it doesn't work. I don't like it. So then the last uh, last kind of fun thing we did is my family's also very big on Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers uh, Christmas album. I think it's Once Upon a Christmas. It's a fantastic Christmas album. It just really is. I like it. And whether you like it or not, yeah. but it's fantastic to me. So we all love, have an affinity for Dolly Parton, you know, specifically around Christmas time for that reason. Uh, that being said, while... My wife and I were out not too long ago shopping for Christmas presents. We saw a box of Dolly Parton authorized sugar cookies. So we bought said box and brought it with us. Now it was my suggestion that all the adults, somebody makes the dough obviously, that doesn't take anything, but all the adults shape the sugar cookies And try and replicate Dolly Parton's breasts. And that way my dad, the maestro, could judge and see who's the winner. Needless to say, that didn't happen with all these fucking squares. But, whatever. I wonder what her breast milk tastes like. I bet you Dolly Parton's breast milk is like the pure, it's like whole milk. They're like, this is all America, baby. Gosh, okay. Hang on a second. All right, we're going down this road, people. Sorry, you can skip ahead about four minutes if you want. That means, all right, so that means non-fat milk would be like Gwyneth Paltrow. Nobody wants that shit. No, Gwyneth Paltrow would be almond milk or some stupid alternative that everybody hates, like organic walnut juice. That would be Gwyneth Paltrow's breast milk. Mm, Let's see. I think J-Lo would be my favorite non-dairy milk product. And that would be the Califia uh, Almond and Toasted Coconut. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And it's a little alternative, but the goods are there. Yeah, she's probably Califia. Almond milk? Let's see, whose breast milk would taste like almond milk? Hmm... I think that would be almond milk, almond milk. I wonder if that's an older broad. Hmm. Almond milk. Let's get back to almond milk. No, almond milk. It's right there. Oh, almond milk is Jennifer Aniston. That's almond milk for sure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's almond milk for all those reasons. All right, well, I won't talk about breast milk anymore uh oh i will say i do have to give my tip of the cap to uh my brother's old lady who had the best joke of the weekend so considering uh, i'm a somebody who likes to laugh i gotta share it with everybody so her family tradition was that she makes hot chocolate from scratch with mexican chocolate um i don't remember the name of it started with an i and then there's like two b's a bar uh, something? I don't know. Anyway, um, you know, she's doing her thing and, you know, chop up the chocolate real fine, shave some down, throw it in there. So she implements my brother uh, as her help because she got overloaded with making the Dolly Parton sugar cookies because she is the baker of the family. Um and she didn't mind doing it. She liked doing it. She modified the recipe to make them extra fluffy and add an egg or something. Oh, she's awesome. Um, so the thing with breaking down real chocolate to make hot chocolate is you have to constantly stir it so it doesn't get stuck at the bottom of the pan. So she asked my brother to help out and provide his services. And <laughs> when he wasn't doing it good enough for her, She's like, you know what? Just walk away. I got it. And she turns, she goes, weaponized incompetence. And it was, it floored me. That was just the best line that I've heard in a long, long time. 
And the reason why it's so funny is because it's absolutely true. My brother is one of the smartest people I know, and he definitely gets out of as much shit as he can. <laughs> he likes doing his own shit with his own time. He doesn't have time to do other people's shit. <laughs> uh, which, he's always willing to help, but you're going to get his level of service, you know? It's fucking awesome. It's hilarious. You give him a hammer, and that guy will run circles around you. But you get him in the kitchen, he's like, meh. <laughs> And yes, I had to look up incompetence when I went to spell it. So, why do they always make the hard words the ones hard to spell? Fuck you, it's already hard enough, English. Gah, people are dicks. Anyway. Oh, let's move on to the real world, not this other world of mine. So, I, in sports, the NFL COVID protocols are kind of crazy all over the place right now. There's these big outbreaks. and The NH NHL is just said, we're going to suspend the season. They're like, mm, fuck you guys. They've always been on the cautionary side of it, and I don't think they get enough credit for that. Because, like, the NHL was always like, we're not putting our players in harm's way. They're like, we can play, we'll figure out this season. It's not worth our athletes. So I really appreciate the fact that they do that. Now, they also don't make as much money as the NFL, so they can do that. I understand that, too. Uh, the NFL makes so much money, they're above the law. That's just how it is. Because, okay, here's how it goes. I don't know, like, for work, for doctor, whoever, CDC, FDA, all these people are saying, okay, if you get it, you got to quarantine for 10 days, you got to do this, you got to do that. Does not apply to NFL players. They can show up to work whenever the fuck they feel like it. Because as long as they have two negative tests in the same day, it does not matter when they tested positive. Does not matter. If it's within the first 24, if it's the next day of a positive test or same day as a positive test, they can use like a PCR, which I don't know what that is test, but it sounds like it's just a easy peasy, whatever, quick one. This is what we do all the time, like a rapid test. Um, and there's another one called like a meta, meta, I don't know what it is. Um, and that one sounds more like legit. And that one, you have to take two negative tests uh, with after like 48 hours, then you have to do that. So technically, if you test positive on Tuesday, you could still play on Sunday. Technically, if you test positive on Tuesday, you could play on Thursday. Like there's just, again, the NFL is above the law, period. So... Speaking of the lingering period of the NFL, did you know that Josh Rosen is one of the only quarterbacks to have negative fantasy points in fantasy football? This guy has negative 1.42 points in fantasy football. Two four points, I'm sorry. I was a little dyslexic there for a second. He has 19 yards passing and two interceptions. Way to go, Joshy Poo. You're really killing it out there. So, anyway, since we're speaking on that, I'll uh, tell you about my fantasy football uh, triumphs. I had in in the league that Dax Dingleberries is dead. Um, I'm rocking the one seat still. I just cruised past my bye week. I play my brother, the shit talker, who kicked my ass in chess all over the Lake Arrowhead. Um, and then my father-in-law has a bye week for the first time ever. And he's playing his old uh, number two, his right-hand man, when before he retired. Who has also, I don't think, made it this far in the playoffs before. Maybe he has, but not to the title game for sure. So, it's kind of cool the way that the matchups went. So, I'm planning on destroying my brother this week. Uh, because he loves the Raiders, so he has a bunch of Raiders on his team. So, mm, that's kind of a gimme unless Josh Jacobs... Needs another child support payment and scores three touchdowns. Um, and then in my other league, uh, I took down, you know, I handled my business. Even though I don't like the way the playoffs were structured in this one. It's a 10-team league and the top eight teams made it. It was kind of fucking garbage, but whatever. So I did. I got second place. I had second place, so I should have had a bye week, but I ended up taking down, you know, my first opponent. Um, and then now I'm going up against... The commish. So, sorry, commish. I got to take you down this week. But that being said, I plan on winning all my fantasy football bets this week. Matt Stafford bet. Oh, 
it's going to be so great when Mike's back next week and I get to rub in his face. Matt Stafford's at 4,142 yards on the season, passing yards. Our bet was for 4,500 yards over under. I took the over. I said 5,000 at the beginning of this bet, and he said he won't even get four. So I said, let's meet in the middle at 4,500. So when I win this bet, because he's only 358 yards away, Mike, who has never stuck a Q-tip in his ear in his entire life, because the doctor said don't put anything in there bigger than your elbow, will get his ears professionally cleaned out. I can't wait to see this mountain of gunk come out of his face. Like, I, I might have to fly across the country to be there to see what happens. And I hope that Matty Stafford nails it this week, has a big 359-yard game just to <laughs> right in your face, Mike, show you what's up. Probably going to win MVP if the Rams do anything in the playoffs. And move on with my day. Because I already got his fantasy football name. Now I'm going to start attacking his actual body. The next is your mind, Mike. I'm going to take over your brain. Don't lose any more bets to me. Although, you're playing a losing game. Because I don't usually gamble on shit that I don't feel pretty confident in. Unless it has to do with sports. That, I tend to just throw my money to the wolves on that one. Especially on player props. Like, gosh, these player props. They're so much fun to bet. Because you could bet them for a dollar to win you know, 60 if you want. Um, <clears throat> but that way, if you don't really have a rooting interest in the game or you don't like the teams or the spread, for me, if I don't like betting on a game, it's usually because of the spread um, or the over-under. Like, I just, my odds aren't good on the money line or, like, uh, I'm like, six points. That's kind of a, I don't really like the line. I'll go to the player props because I still like watching the game, making the bets. I'll pick a couple people, go bing, bing, bing. This many rebounds, you know, that many pass attempts. Whatever, whatever sport it is, whatever player I feel like watching. Um, the problem with these player props is it's so easy to click one extra rebound, 10 extra yards passing, anything like that, because it exponentially increases the value of your bet. So, because it's harder. But it's so easy if you're in your mind or saying... All right, Tyrese Halliburton's, I mean, if he goes crazy, he can maybe get like seven boards tonight. Crazy. And then you're like, all right, seven boards. Dude, 10 to 1 just for rebounds? Yeah, I could do that. And then you go click 8 and you go, wait, 18 to 1 now? Ooh, what's one more rebound? That's a lot. There's a lot that needs to go on for one person to get one more rebound. Already when you already projected them to have a killer game that they're not supposed to have. You know what I mean? So be careful with those player props. That's that's my advice to you. So uh, I'll let you know what, I, what I'm watching. So what I'm watching is Swagger. Just finished Swagger Season 1. It was awesome. Um, it's a good show for young adults. Especially if they like sports. It's just easier. Um, because it is sports basketball related. But I'd even recommend it to adults with, you know, teenage kids, tween age kids, something like that. Like, it just has a good message. It has a good story. It's not soft by any means. It's not soft. Um, but it's also not super harsh. It just it kind of blatantly shows you um, certain certain situations. So especially in the black community, um, especially in youth sports. Like, there's so many different angles it tackles. It's really, really well done. Um, I definitely recommend that, like I said. We did, I did have a holiday movie month. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm just going to burn through some stuff here and let you know the quick and dirty on it. So, listen. By the way, Netflix, fuck you. Fuck you guys all the way hard. Because in their quote-unquote holiday section or Christmas, whatever, all it needs to be to be a holiday or Christmas movie is if there's a Christmas tree in any room at any point in the movie. If they flash past it, that's it. Like, a, it's just insane. The, the first movie that we kicked off this shitty eventful holiday movie season with was a Netflix... Uh, 
whatever you want to call it, called the holiday calendar. So it's got a not-so-gay best friend with a magical advent calendar, and between the two of them, all of this is going to make magic, and they're all going to live together in harmony. I don't know. It was stupid. Barely got through half of it. Couldn't do it. Um, Holiday Rush was the next one we watched, and Dion Cole is the man. Steals the show. Steals the show. Um, That one was a good movie. That one, thoroughly enjoyed. Thoroughly enjoyed. Now, granted, it's a made-for-Netflix Christmas movie, so take it with a grain of whatever you take it with. Take a shot first. I don't care. Um, It'll make it better. But if you know what you're getting when you get into it, it's a good one. That one I do recommend. California Christmas, we had to watch the old one because the new one's coming out. This one is the one I'm talking about. This California Christmas bullshit. There's one scene for like 30 seconds when they're outside hanging up Christmas lights. And then there's another scene where there's like a Christmas tree in the corner. Other than that, it's about this, you know, good for nothing billionaire playboy who's not pulling his weight with the family company. So they need this property, which is a ranch. So they send him to go use his dick to go get this chick to sell her land. And he falls in love with her and ends up becoming a rancher, even though he's never touched dirt in his life. So, you know how I feel about that one. Then we watched, another one that we watched, the last one of these, you know, made for this time of year bullshits, was uh, Holiday, which it was pretty funny. There was, you know, it started off stronger than it finished. Uh, I was glad to see a Christmas movie with a TVMA rating. Thank the Lord they had some curse words in a Christmas movie. Because who doesn't cuss around Christmas? You fucking liars. Uh, And then we did, uh, uh, you know, then we went into some gold standards. We did Elf, which is a classic. Um, We did that 8-bit Christmas movie with Doogie Howser, uh, which was okay. Uh, We watched The Family Stone, which my wife loves, which... Yeah, I get that one. That one makes sense to me. It's different, but I get it. Um, and then, let's see, this comes out Thursday, which is the 23rd. So probably tomorrow, Thursday evening, before Christmas Eve Eve, is when I'll throw on, every year when I wrap presents, I put on Christmas Vacation, and that's when I do my wrapping. Because that's my favorite Christmas movie, Um, our family is, or at least my dad is loosely based on, uh, the trials and tribulations of Clark Griswold, uh, which I think most fathers, you know, that's why it's such a successful franchise because most fathers relate to that, including me these days. Um, and that's just, that's just my tradition. So that's what I'll be doing. Um, and then, and then... What I did also stumble upon just by happy accident while I was doing stuff around the house for the holidays and not really caring what was on TV, I threw on MacGruber, which is, I believe, on Peacock. Dude, wonderfully awesome surprise. Wonderfully awesome surprise. I didn't really care for the sketches on SNL. I thought it was okay. I thought the movie was had its moments of funniness. Um... If you accepted the MacGruber character as just a slapstick goofball that has the foulest mouth. Um, which, by the way, I want to make sure that I put that in as a, as a part of this recommendation for this uh, foul-mouthed comedy sitcom. It's still about a half hour, I think. Um, the way that the opening of it is... I guess Maya Rudolph's character died in the MacGruber mcgruber movie so the opening scene of the show like the series premiere is like a three or four minute song of a recap with maya rudolph singing it and they're showing clips of basically what happened from that until where they're giving you the story so within the first four minutes in a very entertaining way you're caught up you don't even need to see all the other crap boom you're good to go and which i was like oh okay well it's going to be a sitcom on peacock oh oh, oh. The language is way over the top. The topics, the, the sexual, everything is way over the top. Just like it, the movie was. Like, you know, it was like they did South Park and then Team America World Police or the South Park movie. It was like an elevated, raunchy version of that. 
This MacGruber just stayed from movie version to TV version. Pretty, pretty awesome, I think. Um, if that's if that's the essence of this character in this show, this movie, they didn't uh, they didn't change it to format it for somebody else. They were just like, look, if you want to do a show, we'll do a show, but this is how we do it. And that's how they execute it, and that is something that's rare these days. So I really, really appreciate them not manipulating a halfway decent product and just going, hey, if people like it, then they'll like it. If they don't, we're not going to change it. We'll do something else. I really, really appreciate that. So that's a highly recommended not around your kids. Throw it on when you want to hear some some raunchy shit. Um, I don't know. I guess after all that, I... I get why my kid pissed on me. I mean, I'm solid as a rock, right? <laughs> so speaking of rocks, uh, this week, our Spotify playlist is going to be Sly and the Family Stone accompanied with Stone Temple Pilots. So check it out. It's one of my favorites that I've put together so far. This will be 50, 51 or 50. I forget when I started doing it. Maybe 48. I don't know. But I've been doing it for a while for most of these episodes, except for the first couple. Um, and this is one of my favorites, so check it out. In particular, if you want to feel my vibe this week, check out Sly and the Family Stone if you want me to stay. That's where I'm at this week. So on that note, hey, be good to each other. Love each other. Uh, do whatever you can. Give somebody that you haven't in a long time a big hug or... Somebody that you haven't reached out to that maybe there's some tough feelings there or something like that. Just let them know you still care about them, even if you still don't want to talk. It's important. All right, guys. Love y'all. Can't wait to see you next week. Happy holidays, and we'll see you on the new year. We got a big surprise for you coming up. Later.